Hey guys, we are, what is today? April 7th? Yeah, it's Sunday, April 7th, and we are just gonna make an update video. My very last video was just telling everyone, hey, don't be worried, I'm gonna take a break from YouTube. And there was a few reasons for that, and none of them were bad reasons. Um, one of the main things was, I just felt like coming out of Christmas, I wasn't getting into a good routine with the kids and school specifically. So I really need to focus on that. And the other thing is because, I think the reason for that was because I just had too many things on my plate. Um, one being us going through some really deep healing that we're still going through, but it was kind of like the beginning of some like really intense stuff. And I was just overwhelmed by that, but like in a good way and I had to focus there. So I was just keeping my focus on the things that had to have focus, kind of like, um, is it like when you prune a plant and like all the energy goes into the roots? That's what it felt like. Like I just needed to prune some things off so all my energy could go into like the most important things. But it is spring now and I have to say for me with spring always comes renewed energy, renewed excitement, renewed vision, just renewed hope. <laughs> I love spring, it's my favorite season. And um, winter is always a little bit hard for me, January, February anyway, like mentally, not like super bad, but but it is difficult and um so it felt good to just give myself you know all of march to do what i need to do and so here we are this is an update video for you but actually exposing a little bit of our process is um this is actually also a getting started video for us yeah because <clears throat> You, you might be able to imagine this. I don't know. It's really intimidating to start back to making videos. It is a, it's a hard thing to do. It's like there's a level of self exposure, but also just creative hurdle. And so it's, it's, this is us just starting the process that we're not going off and filming a, like a full in depth video with a ton of editing. We're just starting mm -hmm. the ball rolling towards getting back into telling our story. Um, so as much as us updating you, this is just us doing the process of like, we know what it takes to get going is you have to start the process. So here we are. Um, it's so beautiful. And this time of year is, um, really encouraging and it's a new season and it's, it's a new season for us. Um, I think one of the, the challenges in the past um, year has been maybe a um, the mismatch in what we expected as far as what would change in our relationship and how quickly things recover. Um, and it's been a really slow process. It's not picking up where we left off. That's, that is, that's not possible. Um, it's more like going back and remaking things. It's like rebuilding a foundation. Yeah, so we've been in a long, in-depth process, and I feel like we're just coming into this point now um, where we're saying us and mm -hmm. what are what are we gonna do and that mm -hmm. I feel like that's where we're at now mm -hmm. I like the way yeah that's the good way to see that and that's coming out of um, that's just the reality when you're coming out of so much loss and hurt Brianna feeling like she has to protect herself um, and carry everything and we're coming to this place where that honestly is like this no longer possible and we can we're in a place where we can see okay here's the future for us um yeah and just to clarify when he says that's no longer possible he's not telling me that i'm telling him that yeah. i i can't um carry such a heavy load and it it needs to be more of a, we just need to meld our, start melding our lives back together as like a family and as like a married couple more. And we 
been keeping our lives very intentionally pretty separate so that we could both work on ourselves and work through a lot of hard things and healing and um but this season is changing it's shifting so we're trying to figure out what that looks like and how to do that yeah and for anyone that's never anyone that's been through something that we've been through understands this process and um why it takes a long time and why um rebuilding a life rebuilding an entire life is not quick or simple or easy um and so if you're thinking well what's the big deal just like pick right back up it's just that's not how it works when things have been so shattered and, yeah um because it's like if you were to shatter a piece of glass like just completely shatter it you couldn't put that glass back together you'd have to buy like a completely new piece of glass or that's like not a great analogy but that's how shattered things were so you don't just shatter something and then just glue it back together um and i wouldn't want to because it'd be way more fragile it'd break a lot easier it'd be more likely to break and that's not what we want we want to rebuild so that because you know just because our a lot of the trauma we've been through is like we're past that and now we're healing there's, there's always going to be more hard things in the future like life has hard complicated things that come along and we want to make sure that we are strong and that we're healthy all the way through and keep building on that foundation because um, we don't want to be shattered in this way again i think brokenness is okay in seasons but i don't think it has to shatter you like we were so it's a there's a lot of different levels of rebuilding yeah it's an apache helicopter oh if you're wondering too so <laughs> um there's three apache helicopters oh gosh there could be another one um i love seeing them though <laughs> they're like exactly the same distance i love seeing them they're just cruising um headed west all right, so there's so many layers of rebuilding and rethinking. And the reason why you can't just pick things back up and put them back together the way that they were is because inherent in the failure um, is the reality that that the original way we operated was faulty. And so it's not a matter of just putting things back in place as they were. And this in no way um, denies the connection and the beauty and the love that we had in our lives previously, because that yeah. was real. Yeah. I like how you said um, that. But when I'm thinking about anything from our relationship, to how I relate to the kids, to how we're gonna move forward with business, with YouTube, engaging in the world publicly, and how we're gonna engage with work itself. I'm thinking, okay, how can I do this in a way where I don't wreck myself again? Mm. And because there's a, there's a level to which, um, the very way I operated um, from a very core level was not sustainable and not something that I could keep doing. Uh, and so it's, 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 it's basically a, um, us reimagining, like how do we engage with each other now so we can, I mean, just a specific example would be in our relationship. <clears throat> how can we walk forward in relationship um, daily building real connection and not building hurt and resentment. And that's something that has to, that stems out of the way you interact every day on like a moment to moment basis. So how can we move forward in relationship and not just build new resentment and new hurt and new cracks um, that will come out in the future. And then from like a business perspective, it's how do we 
engage with business in a passionate and and you know productive way i want to work hard i want to throw myself into it but my and temptation authentic. yeah and authentic but my temptation personally is is a all or nothing approach you know i don't think that'll ever go away for me but it's it's i'm either a hundred percent engaged like this is an emergency and i have to do this like six days a week um or really struggling to do it at all. So how do we find balance in that um, moving forward so we're not just building up stress and exhausting ourselves and running ourselves down? Um, I also, something I think about a lot <clears throat> in this time, I would view this time of the past year and honestly the coming year, it's a time of recovery for our family mm -hmm. and uh, our hearts. Um, and I see that about myself, I see that about Rihanna, but I really, really see it about the kids too. Um, and I feel like every minute I get to spend with the kids, um, I'm savoring. And I feel like it's this building healing. And I'm trying to say, I love you as much as I can and hug our kids as much as I can and just make little connections with them and really value our time um, together. We've been playing Foursquare in the driveway the past few days. I'm giggling because I can see two of them playing right now. They're just so cute. <clears throat> and so it's kind of, it's just like, I feel like in many ways we have this new vision of our life moving forward. And we're sitting down, um, trying to sit down and have these conversations. Not just jump in. I think both of us have this impulse to just like push forward into things. Like, let's go get it kind of. Yeah, I'm a go-getter. And um, that's that's great. That's a great thing. But we're in this period where we're trying to be really reflective and ask questions like, uh, this is from Dr. John Deloney, who's connected to Dave Ramsey. He says, what do you want your house to feel like? And take that as a starting point. Like what infrastructure, business plans, schedule do you have to build to achieve the thing that you want your home to, to feel like. And that, we don't have a home, but we're asking that about our family and our future home. Like this isn't mm -hmm. our home. Right, this is the house. I, I live here with the kids. This is the kids and mine's home. But like Arthur does not live here and there's different reasons for that, but um, it's not a possibility for him to live here. So just to clarify what he means by that. Yeah, and that's a, <clears throat> that's, we don't have to move forward this quickly, but that kind of leads into this pressure that the situation we're in right now, the, the way I view it is we're in the middle of this season of recovery, which is a, a slow nurturing process for each other, for ourselves and for our kids. But in the middle of a period of recovery, there's also this immense pressure from no one else, this immense pressure, which is our desire to have a place together. So that's what we're looking for, towards. Um, and, and, they, and they may be wondering like, what you mean by that. Like, why don't we just move to the farm? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, moving to the farm. So the options at the farm um, would be all of us living in the camper, which is a physiological possibility, but it's something that we're not willing to do. It's an experiment we've tried two times, um, living in a camper, and that is, um, that's an example of us saying, hey, we're gonna make this decision and sacrifice. And it turned out to be something that was 
so overwhelming and challenging in and of itself that it actually was a part of preventing us from doing other things. And so we don't, I don't see that as an option in any way for us to go from a really challenging time of hurt and recovery into um, what would be an extremely challenging living situation. So we, we're, I don't even want to try to throw out all the ideas we have in this time today. But we are discussing them. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're trying to figure out what's the best way to move forward. And there's several divergent ideas on the table for what might be next for us. Yeah. Um, and they're exciting to me, honestly. Yeah. Basically, we don't want to put ourselves in an extreme amount of stress, like in a very stressful situation, which living in a camper is very stressful. It can also have lots of good times. There can be lots of positive things from it. But we are just trying to be gentle with ourselves and with our children and make sure that like we are cultivating peace and calm and stability um, within ourselves, but also, of course, like for our whole family, for our children. And I personally like don't think that I have the strength. This may sound silly to some people, but um, just because I've, I've experienced living in a camper two different times and um, and there were reasons for it and there were goals within it and that was good but i don't know it takes a lot of, of mental strength that i just don't have i'm just gonna be honest and i actually like admitting that because i'm a really strong person yeah. so i like admitting like i'm not strong enough to do that yeah you don't have to you don't have to say that sounds silly if that sounds silly to someone they're either an incredibly strong person or they need to go to therapy <laughs> i don't mind saying it though. i don't mind clarifying it doesn't bother me and it's probably the latter no it's okay can you just be quieter please wilder you're fine drive your car where you want to drive it just could you do it on the grass daddy yeah <laughs> Where are you headed? Right here. Okay, don't play with that loud car right there. When I was about right here, I was trying to stop it. <laughs> Inertia. All right. When I was trying to stop it, I was right here. Can you go play for me? There's no way you, you can stop because you have to keep running oil. That's how you stop it. Cool kid. Um, so another thing we're trying to figure out is how to like, um, become us in this channel again. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And I just want to address a few people's concerns that I've seen. Like they really like it. They really like my content. They like the things I've been producing. Um, they like it being just me and, and that's totally valid. I mean, there's some really, I like some of the content I produced as well. And I don't think that will change, but we are going to, I mean, they'll still be gardening and they'll still be day in life and they'll still be um, cooking and stuff. And I want to get way better at having recipes ready when I cook. But, um, but this channel was never meant to be just me. And I picked it up in a time of great need for my family and in doing so cultivated a new viewership and new relationships with you guys and have felt so supported by you guys so loved on prayed for encouraged and supported but ultimately this is our channel um you know when i started this channel i'll be honest or like when i picked it up for just as just me i didn't believe that arthur and i were going to stay married I didn't believe that. I didn't see that happening at all. I was completely hopeless in that regard. And um, so I truly, I truly believe that's what I was gonna be doing. I would much rather the story be that um, God heals my marriage and heals my family than continue on it being just me, obviously. <laughs> so the channel is gonna change and we're still kind of figuring that out what the name's going to be and all the content and stuff, but, um, but it is going to be us, not me. And that gives me a lot of joy. Yeah. And here's the thing. So we, we're not, we're not laying out all of our possible plans right now. We're in the process. So here's where we're at. We're in a process. We need to get the channel going back. 
just because we have to start working again. I'm I'm working in carpentry, but we have to start the channel back up again uh, financially to be transparent. So we're the the next period is going to be an interim period where we're working on it together. We're gonna it's, it'll be similar content to what we've done in the past. We have some cool plans for it um, for the next maybe six to eight weeks, and then um, in the meantime we're in this new place of saying, okay, what's next for us? We're having these conversations right now. What are we going to do? We know we need um, somewhere else to live. I'm not putting a time frame on that right now. Um, a place that we can actually live together in the same house and be a family. Um, we want a mission together. This is what we're doing as a family. Um, and we don't know what that's gonna be exactly, but what I will tell you about the content is whatever we come up with, apart from YouTube, Brianna and I sitting down, what we come up with and say, this is our family mission. This is the thing we think is gonna be the best context for us to have a home, for us to recover in, for us to grow in, and for our kids to recover in and grow and mature. That's what we're going to do, and that's what the channel is going to be about. So that's like, that's the promise is you're going to actually see like the real mission that we're on and the thing that we're pursuing. And and that's going to be the channel. You know, I mean, in some ideal world, we might have our normal lives and then have a channel about some very specific thing over here. Um, but right now, we, we don't have the margin to say... Um, we don't have the margin to say like, we're gonna have this business over here. It's just, we have to plow forward with our mission. We're gonna bring you along with the story. And honestly, I mean, that's exciting to me because I'm, I'm excited about what's next for us. I was looking at my phone because um, someone posted this video on Instagram the other day that like blessed my heart so much. And it's, it goes along kind of with what Arthur's saying. I mean, obviously this is a very private and personal path. But, and we'll keep the important the parts that are super private personal that way we always have but um but we do feel like this is something to share because so many people in this world have experienced great brokenness like we have and maybe haven't known that there was another side whether that was with their spouse or not or it doesn't matter what like they didn't know that they were gonna be okay. And so anyways, I just, um, someone posted this the other day, it says, there's a video that goes with it, but I'll just read what it says. Um, Imagine being so committed to growth, you are willing to fail in front of a crowd over and over and over. Failing publicly is 100 times worse than failing privately, but the reward of celebrating together when you finally get it, and then it just has like heart emoji eyes, so I can't finish the sentence, but. <laughs> It's because it's a video of this kid trying to do skateboard down this uh, railing on stairs. And it's like hundreds of people standing around him. And he fails like dozens of times. And then when he finally gets it, like literally everyone is like freaking out happy for him. And you know he's like being surrounded by all these like really good skateboarders. And he's just this kid. Like how shameful that could feel and probably did feel. But then... I mean, he did the work. He's the one that got better and better, but then everyone celebrating with him, mm -hmm. it brought me to tears. <laughs> it made me think of our, our journey on YouTube and we are completely 100% choosing to share that journey. But it just made me think about like all of the people in that crowd that were inspired by that kid and all the people, not just the ones that were trying to do the same skill as him, but also the ones that helped and supported and encouraged. Mm -hmm. And um, it also, and so I think about YouTube that way, mm -hmm. like, you, so many of you have literally been with us since our eight-year-old was 10 months old mm -hmm. and he's eight and a half. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's crazy. I mean, that's more than half the time I've even been a mother. And I just think that it's such a beautiful thing, though sometimes a very hard and very exhausting thing. It is such a beautiful thing to appropriately share this journey with you guys. Um, and the other thing is this, this is what I was thinking of too when I read that, is I have a group of women that I'm very close to um, that I go to when I need prayer. 
and when I need encouragement. And But I don't only share with them the times that I'm like, help. Mm -hmm. I also share with them the times when I'm like, look what God did. Look what's happening. Because I think it would be super discouraging on some level for them to never see that like our prayers were answered or like there was an overcoming or like their strength carried me or like God like saw us all through. You know what I mean? And also because I like sharing it with them. But anyways, so that's the other thing is like, I just think it's cool to get to share the healing part and the overcoming part and the part where we get to celebrate, even though we're not, it's interesting. It's not like it's, there's no like into the journey. It's not like, oh, we've arrived there. That's not going to happen as we've experienced this last like 10 months. Like that's not going to happen, but we have these wins along the way that feel really big. And then there's some setbacks is what I've seen. And then we kind of have some wins and then there's some setbacks. And I think that's just like how it goes um, with healing and with hard things, you know, with anything that's worth pursuing and, con and continuing on with. Was, yeah, I was kind of surprised by it. I was kind of surprised that our healing hasn't just been this linear thing that we just kept doing. You know what I mean? It's been like a little bit, oh no. <laughs> and then woohoo and then scary again and at least for me it has been mm -hmm. so yeah it's kind of fun to talk about this yeah I mean honestly the whole um the whole is still deep there's a long way to go in digging out of the hole. Like rebuilding our life. Yeah, yeah. but I put us in. Um, and... That can feel overwhelming. It's very overwhelming. It feels, it feels almost impossible. Um... step at a time that's I mean that's this this video is an analogy for that just because like it's it's really overwhelming to think oh we're gonna start back and produce YouTube videos but then it's not that hard to make one it can be um, psychologically and emotionally difficult to me that's harder the hardest part of it yeah and then the other piece that's challenging with that specifically is just um, getting the time for us to like focus together where we're actually in the same geographic coordinates and yes. we can say, all right, let's do this together. Um, and that's for now, probably what it's mostly going to be is doing this together. I'm not saying you won't film a video every now and then, or I won't film a video, but in many ways, in many ways, honestly, we're kind of fragile and weak right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and the cool thing though is that not at every moment but often we're actually loving and supporting each other in that but there's a lot there's a lot that has to be done and a lot that has to be set right um And it's, it's very intimidating. But what I'm excited about is what I'm figuring out and just with my schedule, with work and other commitments I have is like, I, I have to cut some stuff out and just focus in on these three things. One is my personal um, wellness, healing, so that I have something to give to my family every day. And that's the next thing is fostering and valuing in every way I can and encouraging and supporting 
enabling my wife and my kids healing and wholeness. And then the third thing, which will be a huge push and take a huge amount of focus is like, how do we get out of this uh, financial hole, get a house that's not just some random rental house that costs some ungodly amount per month in Asheville. Because they do, even where our apartments are ungodly. Oh, uh, the real estate market We're has gone. We're talking like $2,500 a month. Has gone month. crazy. And I know that's a national trend in the United States, but we have this weird pocket here. I don't, I don't know this thing. I don't know a ton about this, but we have this weird pocket here where there's uh, Asheville area has been featured. It's a very nice place that's been featured in many, many publications and media, and it has been flooded. This might be a little off topic, but why not? So like when you, if you drive around Buncombe County where Asheville, North Carolina is, I could drive you around and I could show you somewhere in the lines of 50 to 100 apartment complexes that have been built in the past 10 years. Oh, I know. And I'm not talking like just a few apartments. I'm talking about like 100 units. There's dozens and dozens of these and they're actively building them currently. Constantly. There was a time... Um, this is more on the tourism side, but there was a time uh, two years ago or something. And when you went downtown Asheville, there were six cranes. All of them oh, were yeah. building different hotels. <laughs> yeah, or parking lots. And it is a city of like a quarter million people or le less than a quarter million people. I think the county is somewhere. Anyway, rough numbers. But I this, think it's a lot less it's, than that. The growth is insane. And the real estate market is just like, phew. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I think everyone experienced that during COVID, how yeah. real estate prices went up. But the rental, the thing is, is there's uh, long-term rentals are just a thing of the past because everyone, most people Airbnb their properties. Um, and so you can do long, sometimes, like we did in the past, you can do long-term rental with Airbnb, but it's an insanely expensive thing. And then um, long-term rentals are minimum this is for a small, small house. It would be like 2500 a month. So, but we have some ideas. We have some ideas. Um, but I, I honestly, like, I feel like God is taking care of us this far. And it's humbling to be taken care of by God. I know that sounds like, I mean, I am grateful. I'm so grateful. But it's very humbling to realize, like, you cannot do something. Especially when you're an adult and you have children. And you literally need either you need other people's help and you desperately need God's help. And so at the same time, though, when God and community consistently comes through for you, um, you realize like you're going to be OK. Like God is going to take care of us because he loves us and he's a good father. Um, yeah. And I try to remember that when people have come to us in need in times when we've been much more prosperous and much more stable, like we've given with joy, you know, because we long and we love people and we want to see them do well and be healed and walk in, in the good things God has for them. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So anytime I, I'm tempted to be ashamed of our situation, I want to just look back at how far God has brought us and remember how good and faithful he is and of course, remember that he loves us. And um, and then I also remember that that's not how I feel about people when they're having a hard time. Like, I truly want to see people thrive and heal. And, you know, we've always supported people in that way. And it's just been a hard, long season of us receiving that, you know, support, not necessarily financially, but um, just, like, you know, in, in different ways. Am I making sense? I feel like I'm rambling at this point. Really excited about what's next. Um, I'm excited about sharing and uh, sh sharing our story. I I honestly here's this question. Here's a question. When we started YouTube, we started YouTube determined to get financially free mm -hmm. and confident we would. Mm -hmm. And we did. And we did. If you knew 
everything that was going to happen and all the exposure and how painful that was going to be, would you have said, no way are we going to do YouTube? <laughs> do I get to make different life decisions if I know everything that's going to happen? <laughs> well, I guess where I'm going with that is just like, I wouldn't have picked a lot of the stuff that's happened, but at the same time, I did pick some of it and I didn't pick some of it. And some of the hard stuff needed to happen to get me to a place to be a better man and dad and husband. That's the reality. So I guess like, that's just the thing I can say. I'm not gonna try to stand on my high horse and preach or anything, but just like, I would just love, I just like the idea that someone gets helped by our story. And the reason I even think of that is because people tell us that. Yeah. And that had, that was not why we started this, but it's been this, been our why for a very long it's time it's been a pretty big piece that was just handed to us we yeah. did not set out like we're gonna go out and help people i mean there was it wasn't like it, we didn't want to help people and, and help people learn but it was that that was an aspect i didn't expect yeah and it, and that is like that's a really amazing thing and that's why i'm not begrudgingly, but it's painful to expose yourself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm, ex I, I'm exposed. That's why I want to tell her story. Mm -hmm. um, because the healing has just begun. Mm -hmm. It has, it has just begun. It's a long way. Um, you know, I think a lot of times we read books about people who have overcome really intense things, whether it's you know, amazing adventures they've had or really hard things in their life. And we read, we read that book with the end already there, with the silver lining already presented, you know, and yet I think the hardest thing about this is like we, we, you know, we've been living it out without the ending, you know, and so, um, but the most positive thing is I really, really have gotten at least a minimum a thousand messages between Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube of so many women, men don't really message me, which is appropriate, but so many women who are inspired and encouraged um, either before, whenever I was carrying everything for my family, by God's grace only, um, or, you know, since there started to be healing and reconciliation in our lives. And before that, I mean, people were inspired before by, you know, farming and family life and stuff. But, um, but I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, we read a 300, 400 page book. It takes maybe, you know, a few days or a few weeks and that's it. And so a lot of times we experience people's stories so quickly, but that most of the time these people's stories you know, were spread out over years and years and years and years and years. That's really profound, mm -hmm. what you're saying. Yeah, because, I mean, here's the thing. When you read someone's book about their really, their hard story and their hard journey, okay, you already know the ending because you know they wrote a book. You know yeah. there's, and you know they're still alive. They survived it. Yeah. And they wrote a book. There's some success and productivity. You know the ending yeah. just because you're holding the book. But the reality, and I've actually heard a lot of people say this. Yeah. Um, and, and bring this feature out, is that when you're in the struggle, you don't know that you're going to get out of it. Exactly. And it's total darkness. Exactly. When you're, and that applies to everything. When you're working, like trying to build a business, whatever, you don't know that you're going to succeed. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like you're on a path to success. Mm -hmm. And when you're in like a really dark time, it does not feel like you're part you're in this hopeful story and you're just in the hard part. It just feels like the hard part. And that's like, that's the reality that I, I would love to be able to share with people. It's just like there, there, there is hope on the other side of it. And there is true healing. And I think actually that's what we have shared and people, because that's the message. Um, you don't really read the messages and stuff. So I should probably read them to you because I think you'd be really encouraged, but it's, 
that's the message that I get over and over and over and over and over is that that is what is happening for people. And um, I have to say, like, once again, that's not enough. That's we, we don't have some God complex that we can like make everyone's lives better. But stories, everyone knows that stories are encouraging. And everyone knows that we all need encouragement and connection. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I said early on in this video that I, I know that what we've shared brings people help and hope that are in very dark places right now mm -hmm. who truly believe it will never get better. And you and I both have experienced such deep levels of that in the past couple of years and stayed there for long, long, long amounts of time. And I honestly would not wish that kind of brokenness on my worst enemy. I don't have any enemies, but if I did, I wouldn't, I would never wish that on them. But if you are going through really dark, hard things, I just, you know, I hope that you can see that things will get better. It's so slow sometimes. I mean, it is so slow. Um, yeah, that's something I think we need to just remember to be thankful for too. Mm -hmm. Because it's something like, that's something I don't like thinking about. Uh -uh, like how bad it was. I mean, it was like just, it was, I was just in the darkest place that you could imagine. I didn't even know that. I just thought you had just, I didn't know what was going on because you, you didn't talk to me for like. Isn't it Sunday? They're remodeling next door. That's what all that is. They're working today. They're shopping, they just brought it home. Oh. So it's little stuff. I mean, we're just, it's just step by step and it's little stuff. It's lots and lots of little details and focus. Like how we get our kid meaning. And it's like, let's find just one step we can take. One of our kids getting introduced to mowing the lawn. Oh yeah. And that's a big, that's a big deal for his heart. It is actually. It's a huge deal to have like, purpose here's meaningful work and purpose bigger responsibility than he's ever had you there's an element of danger in it which is that's part of that like responsibility like hey you're gonna do this carefully and responsibly not mow the steepest sections because a mower on a hill is like the most dangerous thing <clears throat> um it's, it's a lot. I mean, we could, it would take us hours to explain the complexities of all the insight into our children's hearts and our own lives and all that stuff, but... Yeah, and we won't. But there's there's parts of it I want to... Mm -hmm. There's still parts of the story I want to tell. There's a lot we can There's a lot sure. I want to yeah. talk about that we will tell in, in, in t time. In the meantime, today is a gorgeous day and we are going to go dancing with a bunch of friends, which is one of our favorite things to do. And it's a family dance, so we all get to go. Arthur's mom is calling it. She's a dance caller. And it's with some of our closest, most fun friends. So it's gonna be a good day, a good Sunday afternoon. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. And uh, come along for the journey. They already have. <laughs> <laughs>